G'day guys, so in this video we're going to look at the top four sniper towers. But what it really is is four ways of doing the same thing. But given the circumstances, you may have to do it one way or the other. So first up is the fully floated roof. I'm just going to look at the most basic structures first and then we'll look at more complicated ones later. So a thatch foundation down and now I have to drop another foundation two levels. So a pillar on the side, making sure it's at the lower snap point and then a pillar into the centre, again at the lower snap point. Now we're building in metal, so a metal foundation next to that, two levels lower. Now build the wall as high as you need it. This build's just an example, so I'll only go with two walls high. And now three thatch walls up off the thatch foundation. Now a metal ceiling out from that thatch wall. An important note, the snap point cycling button has changed. It's now RB on Xbox. So don't try hitting the map button anymore. Build some walls down from that ceiling. And now all of the thatch can be demolished. It will remain floating. Now I'll just fill in the back. So you do get a full 360 degree view out of this tower. The downside is you have to build off a lowered foundation. A door on top so we can get in. And now a sloped roof. And we've finished the basic floating roof sniper tower. So the sloped roof allows us to easily change our angle of fire by moving back and forward. It also allows you to shoot from the prone position. So you're much more concealed and you're more stable. Number two is the outside clad. This is useful if you want double walls or if you're building on an already established building. So we'll start with a metal foundation. And now again we're going to have to drop a foundation two levels off the side of it. Pillar on the side, lower snap point. Pillar in the centre, lower snap point. Demolish the one on the side. And place a thatch foundation this time, off the side. Two levels lower. And build thatch ceilings off that thatch foundation. Around the sides. Get rid of the pillar. And build the walls up off that foundation, the metal one. But this time place door frames at the height that you want to shoot from. And now you can clad more metal walls on the outside. But off the thatch this time, so it's lower. Now another ring of metal walls off the door frames this time. Wall in the back. Door frame for access. And the slope ceiling. You can angle it down from the front, but as you can see, it does obstruct that vision out the front. 
because of the overhang at the top. If you wanted it like that, the door would obviously be one lower. But I prefer it angled down from the back. Remember the snap point cycling button is now RB, the right bumper. I'd better stick a ceiling in. And that finishes the outside clad sniper tower. You can now remove all the thatch. And those walls will remain glued to the outside. So this is a really easy way of putting a sniper slit in an existing building. The downside is the downward arc of fire isn't as good as the other methods, which can be improved on by using inside cladding. So to inside clad, start off with the thatched foundation, and we're going to drop the foundation two levels again, the same way we did before. Now you will need fence foundations on that lowest foundation. Then place another metal foundation over the top, off that thatch foundation. Which you can now get rid of. Now place a wall down on the inside snap point. That'll be snapping onto those fence foundations. So from the outside it should look like this. Now snap the outside walls onto the top foundation. Ring the outside with door frames. And ring the centre with walls. Now finally some walls up off those door frames. Sealing in. And close up the back. Sloped ceiling in. You won't be able to slope it down from the front this time. It has to come in from the back. And as you can see, the downward arc of fire is really good when using inside cladding. Aesthetically, it does look quite different though. Okay, so the fourth and final method I'll be looking at is off pillars. This method is useful when you don't have room to place more than one foundation down, or you're building off an existing roof. So I've just built a one by one. Two walls high, wall back off the top and a pillar down. Now I need another ceiling on top of that pillar. Place a box over that top ceiling.
place another ceiling out and then hang three walls off that. Put a sloped ceiling down and you're finished. As I said before, you can build this off any ceiling. You don't need to build it off foundation like the other ones have to be. Anyway, that's the last of the four methods built into their simplest configurations. But there is some limitations to these type of towers. Now you can make that slit deeper. So in this case we've made it three levels difference. So you're compromising better concealment for better visibility. But unlike when you only use two levels difference, the top and bottom are no longer stuck together. So if you demolish that higher foundation, the top will fall down. It's not like two levels difference where it stays floated. Now the other limitation is you cannot shoot unridden tames through that gap. So no one was on the spino so that bullet didn't connect. The bullets are now connecting. So you can shoot the spino or you can shoot him off it. But as soon as he's off it, you can no longer shoot it. The best fix for this situation seems to be to ring the top with door frames. So this is just an unclaimed turtle and that bullet couldn't hit it. So now you can stand, open the door and shoot the turtle. So having the doors there gives you that option if you need it. But as I said, it's only unwritten tames that are the problem. The other issue is the rocket launcher. You can stand and shoot the rocket launcher if you need to. Because don't try doing that through a slit. Anyway, what does this look like from the target's perspective? So he is shooting me, but I can't see anything. And through the scope, the only thing you can see is the very end of his foot. That's because he's shooting from the prone position. Using the slope seating lets you shoot from prone, which you want to do all the time. Because here I got him to sit up, which allowed me to scope him in with a spyglass and then shoot him off the hip. You can't get counter sniped using that method if you go prone. Here I'm being sniped from one of the side slits, and I couldn't see him at all. Here he's moved into the top tower, built off pillars, using that fourth method. And I'm trying to snipe back through a window. I can't see anything, and I get sway because I have to sit up. But anyway, let's have a look and see how it can be implemented within a building. So here I've just built the front face. It's good to keep a combination of normal windows and slits. Keep them guessing about where you're shooting from. I like to keep two towers joined at an angle like this. That way you have two arcs of fire that cover each other. Anyway, we'll go have a look at the top tower. As I said, you can build this one off a pre-existing roof, as I've used the pillars. Huh. 
And I've included the option to have windows there as well. This one shows a common shape that I start with. I just start with a cross-shaped base and then build four sniper towers up off that. Then I'd build the base around the bottom. This one has been hit and blown up by now. It was outside clad with metal and inside clad with adobe. This is another tower I put on official servers. There was only room for one foundation so I had to use the pillar method. And it was really only designed as a last ditch effort. You die, you can spawn up here, grab a sniper rifle and keep shooting. This is one of the earlier towers that I built. Where I used a water tank to stand on, instead of that sloped ceiling. The water tank has a curved top so you can walk over it to change angles. Someone built behemoth gates right in the arc of fire for this one so it's not really good anymore. But you have sniper rifles to grab if you spawn up in there. And there's also a tower on the other side. Again, just with a bed to spawn up there if you die. Can you build the same in stone? Uh, yes you can. Not quite as easy as metal as Sometimes you have to put the walls down in a specific order. This boat was purposely built with a blown in back to make it look like it was already raided. But what it did have was a compartment up the top housing sniper rifle and ammo. I made this boat to park and leave overlooking the south beach. Anyway, enough show and tell. Let's go and shoot some people. You always get action off the south beach. So that's where I went and parked the boat. So here's someone in trouble, getting clubbed out. Just waiting for him to wake up. I actually had him in a bear trap. I placed out there. In the real world, this is called shooting from a hide. So what you do is bait the area for a few days or even months beforehand. Get them used to coming in at a certain time and then you can set yourself up and shoot them from a concealed position. It's not hunting, it's more for harvesting wild meat. But here I was taking out the pest birds. Which I won't show on this channel but you can see it on my other channel at FPS Outback. Now the bait I used in game was really simple. It was just a one by one with a forge inside it. That way whenever I was running by, I could just harvest some metal off the mountain, stick it in there to smelt and leave it for someone to find. And then when I'm ready to wait, I lay some bear traps down on the thatch roof so they're concealed. I did use a window frame on the back so I can turn the forge on and off. Anyway, here we are, in the boat off the south beach. <laughs> Level 1 fresh spawn. Welcome to the server, Teddy Roosevelt. I didn't even see this guy, I don't know how long he was standing there. This gap is only one level difference, so you can see how tight it is. 
but because I'm only shooting over a sp very specific area, I can get away with that. You have to be careful when you get a double because they can free each other from the bear traps. Here I'm just sighting with the spyglass, then shooting with the pistol. That's what I usually do with the suppressor attached. Anyway, don't overuse it and you can get away with this for a long time. So here we've got Bear Grylls getting chased by a raptor. South Beach is always entertaining. I did feel bad about this. Bear thinks he's got this raptor with his stone axe. I did much prefer the old hit marker sounds. I hate it now that you can't even hear it. Anyway, eventually my tribe mates did insist on taking that boat out for a spin. Even though it had no arse end on it. So old mate up in the building there made the mistake of taking a pot shot at us as we come past. And there's our level two again. Poor bugger just spawned back in again. That's just another example of scoping your static target, then shooting with the pistol. And this is another boat, built differently but same principle. This boat was falling apart because I had its plants out on single, unsnapped foundations. So the decomposition time was getting them. So we took it out on its final voyage before retirement. So this is evil up in the sniping position. Because he can go prone there's no sway. Anyway, that's it guys. Um, it's been a long video. I haven't yet got to drawing that second t-shirt for the Witch's Sickle Quest either, so I'll get to that next. But I've been away for a couple of weeks. But I'll see you in the next video.